Hello everybody and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. We are running into the end of the first quarter of 2024 and um, I'm going to try to do this at the end of each quarter where I just go through and briefly kind of recover um, the ideas that I thought were buys and how they're doing since those videos came out. So these will just be the ones, the stocks that I made actual YouTube videos of from the dates that those YouTube videos went out um, and how they've done relative to the S&P 500 since then, um, kind of individually and then as a group. Every now and then I'll get comments that will, especially lately because I don't think I've had a buy video for a couple months now. Now I do have strategies that, um, are in the full cyclical investors club service um and so i have bought other stocks other than these not too many really though um that come from those other strategies or stocks that are not in the s p 500 usually um for the youtube channel i just kind of take everything that's in the s p 500 from kind of three of my main strategies that i talk about publicly um and then go from there so back in 2021 i kind of did a little experiment here on YouTube to see if it was something I might like doing. And I, for about three months, I put out um, quite a few videos at that time. And there were some stocks that were, usually I tried to do a stock that was a buy, a stock that was a sell, and a stock that was kind of in a void for me. And that's, that's how I structured things back then. Um, and then we could kind of compare the results of those over time. So I aim for usually like medium term timeframes, two to five years is typically um, with five kind of being that midpoint of my very longest strategies maybe and my earliest ones is really more like two years. Now, sometimes the stock prices will move in such a way that I'm, or I'll make mistakes or things where I trade um, more than that. But when you do an earnings-based analysis or a fundamental-based analysis, really, um, you can't really count on the stock price to correlate closely with that until several years go by and then the correlations get closer and closer over time. So it really does take time to kind of see how things play out. But I'm very big on actual results. Like I try to share things and use strategies myself. I also bought all these myself. I don't make buy videos for things that I'm not actually willing to buy for myself and my family. So um, so there's there's that. And you, I, I really want to see what those results are for a couple reasons. One, it shows people that, you know, I'm just not some random person on YouTube or, or wherever, just writing whatever I want to um, and not getting the results. So I like to show those results for that reason. But personally, even if I didn't do this and it was just me you know, sitting at home doing it, um, I like to look at that data and analyze it and see if there's any patterns of mistakes that I'm making um, you know, more than once that, it, that can't be like attributed to luck or even on the other side, you know, the things that I'm doing that seem to be working pretty good, if maybe I can lean into that a little bit more, uh, focus on maybe that type of stock or that type of strategy a little bit more. Um, so having that data really does help once you get some sample sizes and once you get some time um, under your belt. So I, that those are the main reasons that I think it's good to just go back and review kind of how things are doing. Think to yourself, talk to yourself in this case, I'm talking to everybody else. Um, what could have, you know, how you can improve or if things are going well, just how you can don't change too much maybe if things are going well. So um, first I want to, I did have once, every now and then I make a random video and Signa was one of those in 2022 it looks like. But for the most part it was the first three months of 2021 and then I relaunched this channel in October, um, basically Q4 of 2023, just about six months ago. Um, so I had a bunch of buys. These are stocks that I've that were I made buy, buy videos of that I took profits in along the way. So I don't own any of these anymore. Um, PBCT was a bank that got bought out right after I made the video by Carl Icahn. Um, and so we got like a 24% profit in like three weeks or something like that. It, it didn't take very long. Um, so this one's kind of frozen in time while the rest of these have just been kind of running. Um, now on average, since this time, these have outperformed the S&P 500 by an average of 69%. That's actually pretty high compared to what I actually made on these because these are ones that I sold. So typically I had double positions in, in these refiners, but I, like Dino Sinclair, which used to be HF 
now it's HF Sinclair. It used to be, um, I forget exactly what the name of it was, but it'll come back to me eventually. Oh, Holly Frontier. That's what the HF stands for. Okay. So when I made the video, it was Holly Frontier. Now it's HF. I, I took profits about at 100%. Same with Valero at about 100% is when I took profits from it. I don't remember exactly when I took profits in principal, but they all did, they all did well. Um, and this is how they've done since then. So you can see that at the very least, even though I may have taken profits too soon, given how whatever's happened since then, um, that the results have been good. They were quality businesses. They dramatically outperformed the S and P 500, um, you know, by, well, the average, re yeah, this is the average that they beat the S and P 500 by. Um, so pretty good, right? So these aren't going to be included in what I'm looking at now, but I just wanted to point out that the ones that I'm looking at is not a complete list. This is just the ones that I still hold, um, from 2021 to this day that I made videos on. Okay. And there's been a lot of name changes. It's so weird. So Elevance was Anthem, I believe. And, oh, maybe that was the only one. Oh, this was, Meta was Facebook back then too. So everybody likes to change their names, but so if you go look for the old videos, which are still up, um, you'll have to look for those old names probably to find them. Okay, so on average, so we have three of these still left over from 2021, one from 2022, and the rest have come since I relaunched the channel um, six months ago. Um, all of them have positive returns except for Comcast, which I'm diligently hanging on to since I actually bought this one a year before this video was made. So I've personally held it since 2020 when the beginning of that downturn started. Um, so I do think I'm actually positive, but when I made the video, um, yeah, things haven't gone so great for, for their stock since then. I will say I made this in conjunction with a Disney video where I tried to show that Comcast was a better investment than Disney and it's Disney's way, way down compared to Comcast. So on a relative basis, it was okay, but negative returns for one of those. That's totally normal. I usually, it's it's always hard to kind of gauge, but like I generally want positive return. I want positive returns 100% of the time, but if I get positive returns 80% of the time, I feel like that's, as long as the return, you know, the negative ones aren't too bad, then that's good enough for me. Like that's still a very good strategy, very good. You know, over time, you're going to do well if you can do that. So it doesn't bother me that you know, I have one in here that hasn't returned to anything except for negative returns for, um, what, three years now. But everything else is positive. The average return is 28%. Um, if you bought the S&P 500 on the same dates, it would be 26%. So I'm outperforming with the stocks that I still hold here on, from the dates that I made the videos um, by about 2% uh, on average. Now, the more recent ones, as I said, these take time to kind of play out usually. So the farther we go back in time, I usually expect um, my returns to be better um, because it takes some time sometimes for the thesis to play out and for the prices to kind of match the earnings. Um, but we can still see what, what what things look like in the early stages here. So all the all four of the stocks that I suggested in the past two quarters are positive, so that's good. Um, I would say, yeah, and they're they're all probably a little above inflation too. Three of them are underperforming. Really, only Albemarle at this particular time. It's been very volatile, so you know you wake up tomorrow and it could be down more or it could be up more. Um, but it's the only one that's like significantly underperforming so far, and it's definitely like we're talking two, three years probably. Um, bet into the future. So you really just have to buy these, tuck them away, don't pay very much attention to them, um, and then see what happens when the cycle, the lithium cycle, hopefully eventually turns up. So you can't really pay too much attention to what the market's doing, you know, quarterly very much. I mean, it's okay to check in every now and then like I am, but um, you're not. it's not going to tell you very much about the ultimate success. When I've, I've traded Albemarle before on a medium-term basis like this, and I think at one point it was down 60% from when I bought it. I bought another position when it was down and a couple of years later it was up. The average return was 100% for the, both of the positions. So when you put them together. 
So you you really just have to accept the volatility is there, but if you get it right, you know the reward will, has a decent proposition of being good down the road. Um, so Oxy is is one that that was the last pick that I had, the only one from 2024, um, and now it's we're starting to see that thesis actually materialize a little bit, um, and so we're we're seeing good returns and outperformance. Um, so I think. And we'll see what happens, but I definitely think the thesis, if you go watch that video, is intact and, you know, oil might be a good hedge for a lot of portfolios. Um, U.S.-based exploration and production. There's nothing super special about Oxy, but it's nice that Buffett is willing to buy it if it gets below a certain price. So, um, so that's the one that I decided to make a video on. So, so there you have it. I mean... These the returns of my holdings are still they're outperforming the S and P five hundred. I don't have too many that are negative. If you go way back in time, the picks are even better. So it's true I haven't made a lot of buy videos, but I mean we're one every six weeks, right? So when the market's making all time highs, and I'm kind of the type of investor that likes to buy things when they're a little undervalued, um, you can you expect that it will be a little bit slimmer pickings. And you just have to kind of um, just accept that if you're using kind of strategies like I'm using. So I think that pretty much covers it. These numbers, I, I did add dividends back in, just in case anybody's wondering. I did that right before I uh, made this video. So these should include um, like total return type. I use white charts for that, um, returns. Um, and I would say when I just review all these, I probably continue to like these older positions are pretty much continue to hold kind of buy and hold at this point. Um, Comcast, if it really weakens, maybe, but I think the weakness has mostly been priced in all this time. So I wouldn't be in a super hurry to um, to run out and sell it. Um, that's the only kind of weak one. And I don't think any of these look super overvalued. Meta is tough to value because if it's if it does, it could be cyclical in a downturn. But the way things are going right now, I mean, everything looks to be kind of accelerating in the service area. So um, I'm probably Meta is probably a buy and hold for me at this point in time. And then these new ones are all the ones that I'm just starting, and we'll see where they go in the next couple of years. Um, okay, hopefully you found this useful. I'm only going to do this once a quarter probably. Um, just to kind of keep up on everything. And so we can kind of see how things are going and maybe something will pop up that I can talk about that I wouldn't talk about in like a normal video. All right, thanks for subscribing to the uh, Cyclical Investors Club and I'll be back with my normal type of videos in the next video. Later.